So I recently created a small Lucy Cold Fusion utility that allowed me to scan over the contents of a Redis database, examining the keys, specifically looking for uh, TTL values or time to live values. And this is because I thought my Redis database had a tremendous number of keys on an ongoing basis, which probably meant that there were a lot of keys that didn't have a TTL, meant that, meaning that they would persist forever. So once I discovered that and I was able to scan through and look at the keys, I went and created this Redis TTL backfill service, which will iterate over the Redis database, applying TTL to persistent keys such that I can bring my Redis key space back down to a, a normal level. Now, uh, I don't have a single Redis instance. I actually have hundreds of Redis instances, and I need to apply the same algorithm to all of those instances in uh, hundreds of environments that I don't actually have access to. So in order to do that, what I've done is uh, temporarily hooked into the health check endpoint for each application. So this is just a snippet. I've extracted it from our Kubernetes health check. And the Kubernetes health check gets called every 10 seconds by Kubernetes on every single pod in a particular cluster so that Kubernetes can decide whether or not that pod is uh, healthy and can receive traffic. So every time the health check executes, I end up calling this code, which calls this backfill async method. Now this is the only public method on this cold fusion component here and represents the ingress to our algorithm and is supposed to be done in a way that is asynchronous such that it doesn't stop and block the execution of the health check. So let's take a look at how this works. So here is my backfill async method. Now the overall algorithm here isn't terribly complicated but it has a number of responsibilities and I've tried to break out each one of those responsibilities into its own method so that the individual steps become easier to understand and to reason about. So the backfill async method has the responsibility of spawning an asynchronous thread so that the backfill algorithm doesn't block the operations health check such that we don't accidentally uh, cause the, the probe to fail such that Kubernetes takes the pod out of rotation. Now uh, you'll see that not only does it spawn the asynchronous thread, it's also using this should process backfill call here and that reads from a launch darkly feature flag such that I can turn this algorithm on and off across all of my uh, application instances. Um, launch darkly uses an in-memory cache of its feature flag, so this is uh, essentially a non-blocking or a negligibly blocking uh, process. So once the asynchronous thread has been spawned, I call this backfill sync safe. Right, so this is the async version, then I call the sync safe. Sync meaning synchronous, uh, safe meaning that it handles errors internally. And that's right below here, and we can see that the sync safe method um, has the responsibilities of catching any top level errors from the algorithm, but then it also has the responsibility of synchronizing the execution of the algorithm across all of the application pods in a particular cluster. Now, the algorithm that I'm using here uses the scan operation in Redis, which uses a cursor to iterate over the key space. Now, I can't have a bunch of different application pods all trying to use the same cursor. The cursor will get messed up. So essentially, I have to use a distributed lock, which is what this method does internally, to synchronize the execution of this callback such that only a single pod in a particular cluster is iterating over the Redis database at, at one time. Now, inside of this scheduled, uh, inside of this distributed lock, uh, you'll see that I then sort of loop uh, checking the feature flag and seeing how much time has passed to execute this backfill sync unsafe. So this is the sync safe version, meaning it's the synchronous and error handling version, now calls the synchronous and unsafe, meaning that it doesn't handle the error, uh, the errors themselves. Um, and this is the method that actually executes the, the meat of the, uh, of the algorithm here. And that's just below here. Here's our backfill sync unsafe. Now the algorithm has a number of steps here, but it's, it's essentially, uh, we're looking for keys, checking their TTL values, and then applying a TTL value to any key that doesn't have one. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the cursor from Redis itself. Um, 
If the cursor doesn't exist, that means that this is the first execution of this algorithm on this particular application cluster, so we're going to start at zero. Otherwise, if the cursor did exist and is zero, that means that we've successfully iterated over the entire key space and the algorithm is essentially done. Now, once I have my cursor, I call the scan method at, on the Redis database, getting the next chunk of keys. Uh, here, with those keys, um, I, uh, hold on, so one thing I want to show you, uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, so once I have the keys, I then use a pipeline to get the TTL for every single one of those keys. Then once I have the TTL, I filter the keys down to the TTL with a negative one. Negative one meaning that the key exists, but it has no TTL applied to it. So once I filter those keys down to the set of persistent keys, I then go back to the Redis database and I tell each one of those keys to expire. And then I store the next cursor for the iteration. And this is the next cursor that the algorithm will pick up uh, the next time. And at the end of this, I then uh, log some stats D metrics so that I can monitor the progress of this uh, TTL back backfill uh, across all of my application servers and Redis databases. Um, now there's a couple of things to see in all of this. Uh, first, what I mentioned here is that I'm using this should process backfill, and if we jump down to that, what we can see is that this uses a feature flag to determine whether or not the algorithm is turned on or off. So at this point, I can turn the backfill system on and off across all of my application environments. But let's jump back up for a second. Um, what you'll also notice is that when I set up the scan parameters, I'm also calling this get scan key count. And if we jump down to that, what, you'll can, what you can see is that the scan key count is actually using a, a multivariant feature flag in LaunchDarkly so that I can actually change the number of keys that are scanned in each iteration of the backfill algorithm. And this is really important because I don't necessarily know ahead of time how the application server or the Redis database are going to react to all of these operations that I'm applying to it. So what I can do is start the algorithm with a really small set of keys, like for example, have it scan 10 keys at a time. Then let that run for a little while, monitor the performance of the application, monitor the latency of the Redis commands, and when everything seems okay, then I can start to slowly ramp up this key count such that I can go from like say 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 5,000 and at each step again monitoring the application performance so that I can see whether or not it's handling the load properly. And that allows me to pragmatically apply the backfill algorithm to a production database without having to worry about doing like a, you know extreme load testing ahead of time or really uh, you know having to think through all of the possible outcomes. I build in the safety rails so that I don't have to do some of that pre-planning that you might have to do otherwise. Um, which is, you know, just, again, why I can't, uh, I, I, I can't um, celebrate the idea of feature flags enough. They're, they're just amazing. They've revolutionized the way we do development here at Envision. And, uh, and yeah, it's awesome. Um, anyway, uh, the algorithm itself, again, is not terribly complicated. We're looking at keys, we're checking the TTL values, we're calling expire on the keys that don't have TTLs. Uh, but there are a lot of little interesting aspects here, like I use a bunch of methods here that accept callbacks and then essentially apply logic within those methods around the execution of those callbacks, right? I did that with the synchronization across the, the servers. I do it with my uh, Jettis callbacks here. Um, Jettis is the Java driver for Redis. Uh, I'll let you explore this code on your own. But anyway, uh, this was a lot of fun to write. And I think, if nothing else, um, sort of exemplifies sometimes the ability to just get stuff done and not overthink the elegance of a solution, like create a solution that works and then get it done biased towards action without having to, uh, to be concerned with whether or not something is the most beautiful or elegant solution. And uh, I don't know, that to me feels like that's my, uh, my bread and butter uh, approach to work. So... Anyway, hope this was interesting.